We're still in Unit 1, but now we've moved to Lesson 12. This is about solving percent problems, and it's Part 1. Part 2 is going to be Lesson 13. And the elements of a percent problem and finding the part. This is Lesson 12a. All of Lesson 11 is linked in the description in case you need to go back to it for some help. Okay? This previous video, 11f, was really important. If you haven't seen it, you should click and go back. So as we learned in video 11f, percent problems have three basic elements, a base, a rate, and a part. We did this problem. Tala spends $1,200 or 30% of her monthly income of $4,000 on rent. And the $4,000 was the base and it was missing. All we knew was that her rent was $1,200 and it was 30% of her income. We needed to find her, her base income and we did. The base, $4,000, is the whole amount of her monthly income. The part, $1,200, is a portion of this base. This is her rent that she pays. This is how much she sets aside for rent. So it's part of her monthly income, see? And the rate, it tells us the relationship between the part and the base. What do they have in relation? Well, this is 30% of this, okay? In a percent problem, one of these three elements is missing. We learned in video 11F how to solve a percent problem by using a proportion. We can also find the missing value by using the percent formula. It's base times rate equals part. We have this handy little triangle to help us, and you've got one in the book. Mine's prettier and more colorful. So, we know that our part is going to be green, our rate is orange, and our base is purple. So they're color coordinated. If a part is missing, then we cover this on the triangle, and we can see that we need to do base times rate. This triangle shows the relationship between the three elements. If the base is missing, then we do part divided by rate. If the rate's missing, we do part divided by base. See? So remember that division is the inverse of multiplication. Here's that percent formula, base times rate equals part. Well, we could go the inverse and do part divided by rate equals base. Or part divided by base equals rate, right? This is no different than if we did 3 times 2 equals 6 and then did 6 divided by 2 equals 3, or 6 divided by 3 equals 2. See? It's like fat families, right? They're all related. So this is the inverse of the multiplication problem. See? So that's why we can do base times rate equals part, and then flip it around to do part divided by rate equals base. Okay? Or this one, part divided by base equals rate. Okay? So let's find the part. We can find a missing part of a percent problem with these steps. We identify the base and the rate, we figure out what they are, and using the triangle, we cover the element we're looking for. So if we're looking for the part, we cover it, and it tells us which operation to use, the base times the rate. We change the rate to a decimal and just multiply it to the base. So here's an example. Emma puts 10% of her annual income into savings. If her annual income is $62,000, how much does she put into her savings each year? So here's our rate, here's our base. We need to turn this into a decimal. We get rid of the percentage sign and move a decimal point, one, two hops left, and we get 0 0.10. Now, we know this zero isn't necessary, is it? It's just a placeholder. This means and is equivalent to 0.1. 10 one hundredths is the same thing as one tenth. We can add as many zeros to the back end of this as we want to any decimal and it won't change its equivalency, okay, to another number. So here we've got 62,000 times 0.1 and quickly on the calculator we'll get $6,200. So we know that that's how much she's putting in her savings account every year. And this whole question is just basically asking what number is 10% of 62,000. See? Whenever you have a big word problem, try to put it into a short sentence like this. 
to cut it down to its bare meaning, okay? So that you know you're answering it or not, all right? Let's try another one. Bob spends 12% of his monthly salary of $4,100 on groceries. How much does he spend on groceries each month? What this is asking is, what number is 12% of 4,100? See? That's all. So, we don't see the base, we see the base here, we see the rate here, but we don't see the part. So we know we're solving for the part. That's the part of the triangle we cover. We know we have to do base times rate. And this 12% needs to be changed to a decimal. So instead of 12%, we have 0 0.12, 12 one hundredths. We multiply them and get 492. We have to remember this is a money problem, so we have to put our dollar sign on for the answer. If this were a, were a calculator, problem, we would do 4 and then 1, 0, 0, multiplication sign, the decimal point, the 1, the 2, the shift, and the equals. See? That's on the calculator they're going to be lending you for the test, okay? Other calculators might be different. 35% of 200 is what number? Again, the part's missing. We cover that and see that we have to do base times rate. We have to change this to a decimal. We take off the percentage sign and go one, two hops, put a decimal point in front of the three. We have 200 times 0.35. On a calculator, we do 200 zero, zero times 0.35 shift equals, and we'll get a 70. And there's no money here, so we don't have a dollar sign. Now, if you're using an Android phone calculator, it's a lot easier. What number is 27% of 300? We're looking for the part, so we have to do base times rate, see? So we would do 300 times 0.27, because that's what this is as a decimal. And we would put in 300, zero, zero, hit the multiplication sign, 2, 7, and hit the percentage button. Equals, and it'll give us an 81. So depending which calculator you have, like the one on the GED test, you might have to push shift equals, but on an Android phone calculator, you just hit the percentage sign after the 27. You don't need to do this. You could just do 27% times 300 equals. That's easy, isn't it? But get used to this shift equal ones because you're not going to be allowed to have your phones in the GED test, okay? All right, I have one more example for you. We have our part and our base and our rate. If the rate is larger than 100%, if this rate is larger than 100%, the part will be larger than the base. Hmm, what does that mean? Okay, well, here we have a rate that's larger than 100%. It's 150%. That means that this green part is going to be a bigger number than that base 12. See? Because that's over 100%, even if it was 101%, because it's larger than 100%, this part is going to be bigger than the base. So if we wanted to know what number is 150% of 12, we would do removing the percentage sign and going one, two hops to the left and get a 1.5 as our decimal. See? Because remember, we have to change the percentage into a decimal to do this calculation. And we get a 1.5, that last zero isn't necessary. And 12 times 1.5 is 18. And basically what we did was 100% would be the 12, right? All of the 12 is the 12. That's 100% of it. 50% of a 12, half of a 12 is a 6. So 150% would be 18, see? Does that make sense? So now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 139, and I hope you do well. If you have any trouble, go back and watch video 11F and this one again, okay? Our next video is going to be finding the rate of a percent problem. We just did finding the part. Now we're going to do finding the rate. And if you need more help, all those videos are linked in this description, just sitting there for you, okay? They're waiting for you to use them if you need them. All right. 
I hope you have a really good day. And don't forget to take breaks and go for walks and shake your head out. And sometimes letting this information sit and sink in before moving forward can be good and can help you. Sometimes even if you give yourself a day to just sit and think about what you're doing, it helps. For other people, they have to continue on, otherwise they keep forgetting it. So whichever you are, and do that way, okay? Whatever you need to do for yourself to succeed. I'll see you next video. Bye.